Hi, and welcome. My name is John Cordray, and I'm a licensed professional counselor as well as a board-certified counselor, and I also work within a school district in southern Indiana. And so I want to say a special hello to all the, the Parkland families and students and parents who recently has gone through something very tragic, very, um, very large, on a very large public scale of grief and loss and trauma and trying to figure out how do you move on from here. And so I wanted to talk a little bit about what I call um, false guilt or it could be also called survival's guilt. Because whenever there is a tragic, something tragic happens, whether maybe it's a sudden loss of a loved one or a child, or such as this case, a, a school massacre, it's hard to comprehend. It's hard to realize or think that this is actually happening. And so often people go into denial, like this can't be happening. I didn't plan for this. This is not part of my plan as a family member or as a student. I'd never even thought this would even possibly happen. How do I even move on from here? And so I wanted just to give just a, a few things and, and, and tips and maybe just some, just a little bit of encouragement. First, I want to say if you have gone through a tragic incident, whether maybe yourself, maybe you've gone through something that maybe you could have died or you witnessed somebody else that has died or near death, or maybe you've lost a loved one recently. How do you move on? How do you grasp the, the reality of what just happened? And that, that guilt that you tend, many tend to have, and if you're watching this, you might have this yourself right now. And so that false guilt I want to talk to you and, and talk about because it happens often. And I know what you probably have been thinking or have thought. There's something I could have done. I should have known. If I just would have, you fill in the blanks. But the reality is, there's no way you could have predicted something like this. You couldn't prevent it. You had no idea this was going to happen, but yet so often, probably every day, you beat yourself up. Or maybe you project it on somebody else. They should have known better. Why didn't they know? They should have, did, they should have done something. Have you thought that before? I bet you have. Or you beat yourself up. And so this false guilt or survivor's guilt is, is nothing that you could have done. So that's the first thing is realizing that there was, it was out of your control. It was out of your power. You had no idea. You can't predict the future. It is not your fault that this happened. It's not your fault. So stop blaming yourself. And so what do you do? Okay, stop blaming myself, but then what? What do I do? How do I move forward? That's what you're wanting to know, right? Well, I think uh, if you can be a part of a group, whether it's an online group, a support group, or a group uh, that you're physically present in and in, that you see and talk to people, that you have to process what happened. You have to talk about it. You have to share your feelings. And in many cases, you need to do that with a therapist, with a counselor, maybe not forever, but you have to have a safe place to share and to process these feelings that you're having. You can't do this alone. Please do not try to handle this stress and this trauma all by yourself. Don't be a lone ranger. You need to reach out for help. You need to be able to talk about and grieve the healthy way. Don't hold all these feelings inside. Don't keep it all to yourself. And then you start having these negative thoughts that go round and around and around, right? 
I should have, why didn't I do this? You get angry at yourself, you get angry at other people, you get sad, you get depressed, you get anxious. You might even develop phobias that you can't go in certain places because of the trauma. And so therefore, you might be stuck. You might feel stuck in life that how can I move forward without my loved one? How can I move forward without my child? And that is understandable. Those are feelings and thoughts that are normal. All these anger and, and fear and anxious thoughts and sadness, it's normal after you go through a trauma. But you don't want to keep in that spot forever. There's a time, there's a place, a length of time where you need to grieve, that maybe you need to kind of shut down and, and turn off, if you will. But then you have to start moving forward. Pick up the pieces. So whether it's your child or a loved one, they would want you to move forward. I know, I've, I've met with many parents who have lost a child and they can't seem to go forward. But their child, your child, your parent, your loved one would want you to move forward and experience and enjoy life again. And yes, it is possible. And so I want you, one, to stop beating yourself up. There's nothing you could have done. Two, seek help, maybe professional help. It may be just talking to others who understand what you've gone through, and maybe they've gone through it themselves. And then three, there's a time and place to grieve Definitely grieve, let those emotions come, but then you need to start experiencing life again, getting back into your normal routine. And so those are my encouragement to you. I appreciate you listening or watching and for asking me to be just a small part of your, uh, just your healing. I want to help, but there's anything else I can do, please ask and reach out for help. Maybe ask if there are certain topics you want me to talk about again. Great, let me know. Uh, but I want you to know that this little district, school district here in southern Indiana cares about you and your, your parents and those students at Parkland. So take care, and I really hope that you can work on you. Work on your recovery, work on your healing, so you can start living again. All right, thank you, and take care. Bye-bye.